Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mindfulness When Your Mind Feels Full. Um, this is a co taught lesson. Our presenter today is Miss Mari Venturino. We are so excited to get started with you shortly while you're waiting. Um, we have this wonderful Google form that you can, or Google form, Microsoft form that you can go to. We're going to have some fun questions for you all to answer. Um, so go to the cc page slash th1 for Thursday. Good morning, Mari. Good morning. This is wonderful. We're so excited to work with you this morning. It's going to be so much fun. I know. I'm excited it to hear all it. the responses come through. Yes, I am so ready to see some responses. Um, so what will happen is once you have this Microsoft form open on your screen, Mari is going to be displaying what is called a flippity and a wheel of questions. And don't worry, they're all fun questions. Nothing like finding the square root of anything right now. No pressure today. <laughs> Um, so when we're more, we have a couple more. I see we have 10 attendees. People are popping in. We are so excited to work with you this morning. And Mari, what has been the best part of your day so far? Well, it's still really early here. I'm in California, so the sun isn't even up yet. Um, but I'm very excited to watch the sunrise pretty soon. Oh, so it is six, <laughs> some six twenty-three in the morning on the West Coast. I, my name is Jessica Williams. I'm coming from the East Coast, and it is nine twenty-four in the morning. I know we have people from all different time zones joining us this morning, so we're very excited to have you here with us. If I had to pick the best part of my morning so far, it would have been my breakfast was on point this morning. I had a delicious mm -hmm. breakfast. It's still so early. I haven't had breakfast yet. Oh, no. Uh, it's so okay. Really hey, are you ready for some flippity questions? Yes. And just a reminder to everybody watching, if you go to the Google, the Microsoft form, the cc.page slash th1, that is where you'll be able to communicate with us and write your responses in there. We are so excited to see what you're going to say. Uh, so Mari, if you want to head over to the flippity. So this beautiful flippity wheel has some questions on it that we want to hear what you your responses are this morning. So when you're ready, Mari. I'm ready. <laughs> The suspense. Right. Oh, gosh. Oh, all right. So this is a very important question. We'll see where everybody lands here. Would you rather, so these are would you rather questions. Would you rather never have another coffee drink again or never have another dessert again? Oh, we You're have killing some, me. I know this is really tough, but I want to see who are my people that would give up coffee and who are my people that would give up desserts? I don't know where I land on this one, but for me, I think I would give up coffee because oh. I, I love desserts. I have such a sweet tooth. It's terrible. And I see Jasper. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you. We love you. And the fact that you attend these events, you are amazing. So that's our first shout out of the morning. And we'll see if anybody is um, getting their delightful answers in oh i'm so excited mari what would you give up i'm sitting here super stuck i don't want to give up either one adriana um, ooh, thank you for participating lucas i'm seeing a lot of people giving up coffee right now mari loves her coffee everyone i do love my coffee um it's 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 like it's the morning routine part of it I think for me. So I guess if I could have Raya Rayhan, I'm so, um thank you for telling me how to pronounce your name in your response Mario Yasmin. They're all giving up coffee. I think we're I mean this is very interesting to me cuz 
I really did not want to drink coffee when I was in my 20s because I was like afraid that I would become addicted. So I will stay addicted to dessert from now until forever. Lily, Mario, thank you. Thank you. Oh, no more coffee. Mari loves her coffee. <laughs> I do. I do. Can, the co can I still have coffee ice cream? If I give up coffee, can I have coffee ice cream? Tristan, Jordan, Nicholas, Alessio, Sophia, another Adriana. Coffee, coffee, coffee. People are giving up coffee. I wonder what the... Overwhelmingly coffee. Would say. You want to do another yeah. one? Maylene. Very good. Very interesting. We have... It is um, almost... We have three minutes to the bottom of the hour. Julian, um, let's see if we have another question. Let's see what we can see. Another sure would you do. rather, Murray? Sabrina and Lucas are never giving, they're giving up coffee too. Here's another would you oh, rather. Gosh. Oh, this one's tough. Okay. With summer months coming, coming, would you rather give up bathing for a month or would you give up internet for a month? This is tough because I have a dog that gets smelly sometimes, and I don't like it when I smell like a puppy. So I don't know. And I use the internet all the time. Okay, so Nico, but we had two people. I'm just telling you this right now, Mari. We had two people that said that they would give up desserts, Danica and Rosalie. Wow, we have some coffee drinkers here. Okay, let's see. Would you rather give up bathing for a month or give up the internet for a month? Which would you rather give up for a month? And this is really, really tough. I mean, how would I look at memes? How would I look? <laughs> how would I talk to you, Jess? Javier said she would, we, said like, he or she would. They would give up bathing. Alessio would give up the internet. Sophia would give up bathing. Adriana would give up the internet. Mia so, would give up the internet for a month. This is very wise. I feel like we could have a full discussion about this. If it's summer months, can I still jump in the yes. pool or the ocean? Luke's the thing. <laughs> Does that count? Up, up the internet, I could still play Dino Run. Julian, bathing, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas, Rosalie, and Graziano, internet giver-uppers. This is tough. This is really tough. Jordan, don't Jordan know. says he would. He they would give up the internet and go outside. Oh, Mario, wow. Flip, okay, Diego, anyway. amazing. Thank you for participating. We're so grateful for all of your responses. We have another minute, Mari. What are you thinking? I thought speed round. Are you all ready? I am ready for a speed round. Ooh, let's see if we can see. get another question in. Would I'm you rather? Coffee let's see what we have here. Oh, this one is so interesting to me. Okay. Would you rather go in the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great great grandchildren? Which would you prefer? Ooh, great great grandchildren? Great great grandchildren. So, would you want to go in the future and see that, or would you want to go in the past and see where you came from? This is so deep. Mari, do you have a preference of what would you do here? This one I thought was easier than the other ones. Really? Uh, this one, I think, yeah. I would rather go into the future and meet my great-great-grandchildren. You would? Oh. Yeah. Is there a reason why? I think just knowing kind of how did... Things turn out? Thing turn, yeah, how did everything turn out? Um, I see, and, I, you know, uh, Lucas and Adriana are already chiming in here. I see uh, Nicholas and Graziano and Olivia and Lucas and Adri. There's so many people coming in with a very, this one's much more mixed, much more uh, different. I don't know here. I love looking at the past. I, my dad is really into genealogy and like writing stories. Um, but I would have to say with you, it, it would be like seeing the unwritten future. Mm -hmm. And Julian seeing like saying, what future family so I know if the world ends or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one too. <laughs> so I can see, <laughs> I love this. This is so wonderful. But this is such an interesting, I feel like this would be a great novel, a great novel to read. Oh my goodness. Thank you to everybody. We have 84 attendees. I'm wondering if that's 84 classrooms or 84. This is just impressive. The amount of people we have with us this morning. We are so grateful for you to be here. Um, Mari, it is 
bottom of the hour. How are you feeling? I'm so ready. Are you ready? We are ready. Awesome. Well, everyone, keep that form up. You'll need it a ton today. Um, as we jump into mindfulness when your mind feels full. Whew. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> um, so I'm so excited that we are coming to you from opposite coasts. We are both in the United States, um, so just a little bit south or a little bit more south of you all. But um, Jess and I are actually friends in real life too. Um, so it's kind of exciting that we get to come to you, get to share all this cool stuff with you. Um, I am a middle school science teacher um, and Jess is amazing. I'm a middle school teacher as well. Um, I help out with video production but I'm also a tech integration specialist. Yeah, so we are so excited to come to you, share all these awesome um, tips and tricks and strategies for when our minds feel full. And for our adults and teacher folk listening in, uh, this isn't just for you know all our kids, this is for us too. Um, you know, a lot of these strategies are things that I know that I need, um, you know, every single day as well. So definitely hope you all get something out of it as well. Um, as we start, I want to show you here's a map of the United States. Red is California, the state where I live, um, and then highlighted in the blue box is Southern California, the San Diego region where I live. Um, and this is also the traditional territory of the Kumeyaay people. Um, their territory spans Southern California and Northern Baja California, which is part of Mexico. Um, and I feel very lucky to be able to teach and learn and explore and share all of my passions with you today from their land. We are so excited to be producing this co-taught lesson um, in partnership with Cobblestone Collective and Microsoft. So big shout out to Cobblestone Collective and Microsoft Canada for making this awesomeness happen today. So, so glad you all are joining us. Um, here's our plan for today. We are going to be um, looking at some different breathing techniques. We are going to be trying a body scan. We're going to be doing some journaling exercises and some chair stretches. Uh, we're also going to just be talking about um, kind of our brains and our minds and our emotions as well. It's a really good opportunity to talk through some of these things that, you know, maybe uh, sometimes we don't have words for, um, but just know that these are all common experiences for us. So to get us started um, and to get us brainstorming, so that same forum you had open for our fun little would you rather game, um, you're going to be posting your answers there and Jess will share out some of the highlights that we see. So just to kind of get us thinking, um, what are some examples of positive emotions? that you might feel. Maybe you felt before, maybe you feel now, maybe you know other people feel these things. Again, you're going to post your answers to thecc.page slash th for Thursday one. And I've got my eye on the form responses. I'll let you all know as soon as we get some coming in. Very exciting stuff. Still have some people saying that they would never drink coffee again. <laughs> happiness, <laughs> Olivia, Jasveer, thank you. Happiness, excited. Thank you, Sophia, Rose, and Adri. Um, very much. Lots coming in. I'm digging the participation. Yasmin, happy tears, happy crying. Alessio, Daniel, proud. Brave, Adriana, I'm digging these. Diego, happy, very happy, Mia. <laughs> All positive emotions. That's awesome. Um, those are some really great ones. I love hearing, you know, happy is happy is such a default. You know, we kind of think happy, but there's so many other ways too. You know, think I heard uh, proud, brave. Kindness, David, Ashiba. Vitali, Rosalie, Tristan, happiness, happiness, excited, overjoyed, joy, Nathan, we're happy you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Brave, Mario, I'm, I'm seeing emojis being brought in too, which is very exciting Ooh, to see. 
Jordan, Roa, Mikey, Julian, Mrs. Frank, content, a new word. Ooh, I like that. Good one. Emotional hugging. Awesome. Yeah, now, I, on uh, the flip side, okay. what are some examples of negative emotions? So we thought of some positives. Now some maybe negative emotions, you know, the less fun things that we that we feel. Now remember, negative doesn't mean bad, just means things that maybe make us feel not happy or not proud or not brave. I'm seeing some start to switch over. Still have some positive ones coming in. So thank you to Danica, Olivia, N Nadia, Jonathan, Mario and Rebecca. I've got Lucas saying loneliness and Benjamin saying Ooh. sad. Sophia Rose saying frustrated. David anger. Lucas depression, crying. Angelina, Jonathan sad, frustrated, mad, frustrating, stress, afraid. Matthew, Layla, Gabriel, Mia, Kaylin, Vishali, Diego, Mar Isla, Nathan, Graziano, guilty, unhappy to miss someone who passed away, not proud, Aww. crying, frustration, curious, sadness. Danica, Sandra, Ryan, Nina, thank you. Adriana, thank you. Overthinking. Those are some, oh my goodness. Those are some really good ones. Like you read my mind. <laughs> I know. I think, you know, as we are kind of going forward through the next hour or so, you know, thinking about these positive and negative emotions and being able to identify them is so important. You know, just because they're emotions that don't make us feel good doesn't mean they're bad. Um, everyone feels these things and learning how to identify it and, you know, sit with your body and say, you know, I'm feeling this right now and then knowing how to carry forward is really really helpful for us um so you know we're this is not about trying to hide those negatives you know things are going to happen where we feel frustrated or we feel sad or we feel overwhelmed or we feel stressed and learning how to tell our body yeah that's how i feel right now and what am i going to do moving forward um, is a really really helpful tool for us um, this is one of my favorite um of looking at um, emotions. I use this with my students a lot too and we you know look at it and we decide what are some you know how are we feeling today? Maybe it's one of these, maybe it's more than one of these. Um, but the mood meter is a really great way to find some words to um, talk about how you know we are feeling. So for me, I'm looking at this. And I am definitely feeling, I'm feeling a little bit calm. I'm feeling really joyful getting to be here with you all. But I'm also a little bit restless because I know I have a big project to work on today and it's a little bit overwhelming um, just thinking about getting started with that. So that's definitely been on my mind. Jess, what about you? I was just looking. I love using the mood meter to help me identify. And I, I love, Mari, how you said you're feeling kind of multiple feelings at once. For me, I'm feeling energized because I'm excited to be here today. Um, I'm also a little uneasy and worried because I want to make sure I do a good job for you. <laughs> so that's where I am. Um, but I, I'm watching. And Mari, did you want everyone to to put in the into the Microsoft form how they're feeling? I see some worried. Peyton, Abdullah, uh, Aiden, we're seeing some people like they're saying they're ecstatic. Some are worried. Um, thank you for everybody that's that's participating. We're so grateful. Yeah, you're totally welcome to throw it in there. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to um, you know, kind of start identifying, you know, where are we starting at? Um, mm -hmm. If you'd rather just keep it in your head, that's also okay, you know, yeah. um, but find, you know, find one word that maybe resonates with how you're feeling right now. Yeah. I like this very much. I'm going to leave it up for another 15 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. um, give you an opportunity to just take a look. Thanks. Really easy to find if you need to find it again, you know, just 
um, do a quick internet search for mood meter and you'll see this and, and other versions pop up. Um, I love the quadrants. Some, someone says, I feel blue, which is a whole part Ooh. of this mood meter. So thank you so much. It kind of reminds me of um, Inside Out too. Yeah. <laughs> that the colors don't match the characters necessarily. D um, disgust was a little green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was trying to remember who was, because <laughs> Joy wasn't green, but disgust mm -hmm. was. But yeah, definitely a good way to kind of get into our uh, emotional intelligence as well. Another really interesting thing, this was um, introduced to me. Uh, there's, you know, different groups that use this framework. Um, oops, and my my halt got a little funny <laughs> when it went to present mode, um, but that's okay. I guess the T got tired and fell off. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is one that, you know, somebody brought up to me, I wanna say maybe a year ago, and it really helped me understand, you know, a lot of times when we're feeling those, especially the stronger, uh, maybe less positive emotions a lot of times it's just because we're one of one or more of these things are we hungry are we angry are we lonely are we tired i can tell you for me like in school when it's about 11 30 a.m i'm getting pretty hangry um you know it's about half an hour until lunchtime starts i maybe ate breakfast really quick because i was rushing and maybe didn't get a snack in and so i'm getting pretty hangry so being able to identify that and say you know I'm hungry and angry, and that's why I'm reacting this way. Um, you know, is definitely important. Or at the end of a long day, I'm feeling tired, so maybe I'm a little less patient. Um, you know, maybe if I accidentally say an unkind word, I can be like, well, you know, I definitely did that, but also I'm tired, so maybe I should just go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I think being able to identify this is really important for us. Have you seen this before, Jess? I have never seen this before, but I like the halt because things, emotions can get even higher if you're feeling hungry, angry, like you were just saying, I need to just rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even like being able to bring things back down to just these four, these four elements is, you know, I think a really important strategy. So remember everyone, you know, as we go through this, um, we're going to be talking through a bunch of different um, uh, ways to help our minds. Um, as we go through this, I'm going to share a ton of strategies. Now, this doesn't mean you need to do every single one of them to make, you know, to help your brain when it feels full, um, but I'm sharing a bunch of different things so you can say, well, that works for me, but that doesn't work for me, and that's okay. What works for me is different from what works for Jess, and what works for both of us is different than what would have worked for us when we were younger, um, and it would be different from what works for you all now. So just keep that in mind as we go through. Keep an open mind for these different ways to um, help your mind feel relaxed and calm and content, you know, when there's a lot going on. So as we launch into this, um, I want you to start brainstorming. How does your body and your brain feel when your mind feels full? So think about those physical sensations. Think about, you know, what, uh, what you're thinking feels like. And Jess will share out maybe mm -hmm. maybe five or six answers as they start coming through. I know this one will take a few seconds for you. To I have to so many on. people, as you've been talking, Mari, so many people have participated and like Diego and Yasmin and Alessio and Lily, thank you so much for sharing everything. Jeffrey and Rebecca, Lucas, um, I know one thing that I feel when my body and brain feel a little full, um, I, I feel I can't sleep. It, it, my body feels like electrified when I'm anxious and worried. So it's great that I can identify like, oh, how do I feel? It's making me feel like I can't sleep. Isla, my head hurts, she said sometimes. Mm -hmm. Headaches, lots of kids saying they get headaches. A lot of uh, Callan and Rayanne, they feel tired. Um, Adriana, drained, tense, mm -hmm. Kyla. That's a really good one. Yeah. I feel like I can't think and well I know I can't think as well 
um, you know, even like simple things when I'm really, really stressed, even things that usually make me happy, like I don't even want to do, you know, I just want to like sit in silence and that's not always the best, <laughs> best it, choice. No, it's like when you're feeling your body and your brain feel full, it's you can't enjoy yourself as it's, it robs you of the present. Mm-hmm. Every nervous, bad mood. Thank you, Mikey. Yeah, those are real good ones. Feels like I have lightning in my arms. Restless. Thank you, Brock. Thank you, Hillary. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to just sit still, too, when something's really weighing on you. Sometimes you just want to, like, it's you know, sometimes. Get up feel sick in their stomachs like overwhelmed yeah those are such powerful feelings and it's amazing how our brains and our bodies are so connected that even when you know our brains are thinking things our body is feeling these things and you know it sometimes seems to come out of nowhere um so i'm going to share a couple different breathing techniques um these are definitely useful to help calm down. Um, these are things that you don't need anything. Um, you know, you don't need any materials. You don't need any like tools. You just need yourself uh, um, in order to do this. Uh, this one in particular is called square breathing. And um, this is one that you could definitely do and no one would know that you're doing it. So I know sometimes I'm in a big group of people and I start to get overwhelmed or, you know, there's a situation, something tense, and I can do this and, you um, no one knows, you know, that I'm feeling that way or that I'm, you know, doing square breathing to, um, you know, to help me try to get my brain to at least come back to me a little bit. Um, so if, if it's helpful for you, you can use your finger and kind of trace the path. That's a good way uh, if this is the first time you're doing it. But basically what you do is you breathe in and you count to four. You hold that breath and count to four. You breathe out for four and then you hold for four. So you go. So let's just try it. Maybe try three to five breaths this way. All right, so that gave you an opportunity to give this a try. Um, it's definitely a really great strategy um, to, you know, um, help kind of get your breathing under control. I know that um, for me, when I'm feeling really stressed, a lot of times my brain, like I know that I'm supposed to do it, but then my, my brain does the, I don't want to do that right now, you know. Um, and I have to convince myself, no, this is what's best for you right now. Just take a couple deep breaths. You know, a lot of times you hear, you know, maybe adults tell you, okay, we'll take a deep breath. Um, it's going to be fine. And it's because that those deep breaths help our brains kind of reset. Um, you know, it won't fix everything in three to five breaths, but teaching your body to react to stressful situations by taking a couple deep breaths definitely helps get that oxygen moving um, into our brain and kind of help our thinking skills as well. So definitely a really good strategy. Um, another one. Oh, go ahead, Jess. Oh, I was just saying thank you. These are, I'm, we're seeing a lot of positive feedback from the team on the forum. Awesome. I'm so glad. Another one, if you like just watching things, I know some of these are really mesmerizing. This is just a GIF I found um, online and uh, you know, 
for some of us, you know, just looking at things. So maybe square breathing, you're like, well, that, you know, isn't as exciting. But watching this, you know, you can find some that are flower um, images, like that kind of like bloom and come back. Um, a lot of uh, wearables, so like uh, the like smartwatches have this type of thing built in or cell phones might have these built in. Um, so this one, you know, requires you to look at a screen, but sometimes just having that visual of you breathe in when it opens and you can kind of think of like your lungs expanding and then, you know, squeeze it all back out and then. These are very helpful. We throw these into our lessons too um, at school, you know, like halfway through a lesson, sometimes at the beginning, sometimes at the end, uh, we'll throw this exact animation in and just give us a time, you know, for those deep breaths. And, you know, I know it helps my kids, but also it helps me, you know, as a teacher, sometimes, you know, things can feel overwhelming and I want to make sure that I'm also taking care of me. It's so hard, um, especially all day long. It's go, go, go. I'm used to the go, go, go. And some people that are writing in the form right now are saying, I'm not used to calming things. I'm used to just, oh, got to go to the next class. Oh, got to do this now. Oh, so this is forcing you to be mindful to give yourself a break once in a while. Yeah. And I know as a teacher, I'm definitely like, guilty of that and like go 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 get it done get it done get it done <laughs> you know finish it um okay go to next class and you know i think um you know taking a a break to just take a few deep breaths together um i think is a really helpful thing for everyone to kind of remember well we're all human we're, we're all in this together and you know let's make sure we're having we're taking care of us while we're learning as well it's definitely a big one um, here's another one. It's not quite a breathing, like a deep breath technique, but this is one I just read in a book um, maybe a month ago. Um, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um, so it's it, it didn't have a name, but I'm just going to call it a 20 second full body Titan. Um, so it's up to you, you know, if you're in a place where you can stand, you can stand. If you're not, stay seated. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a deep breath. You're going to Tighten all your muscles as hard as you can for 20 seconds. If you know you get to 15 seconds and you can't hold your breath anymore, that's fine. You know, don't do something damaging to your body. Just you know, hold your breath for up. I'll say up to 20 seconds for what you can do, and then you're going to exhale all that air out and give your body a good shake. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to stay seated because it's a little easier where I am. But if you want to stand, go for it. And if you want to sit, go for it. So go. It's kind of cool because every time I do that, it's like it feels as if kind of a little bit of that stress and anxiety and nervousness and worry just a little bit leaves me, um, which is kind of a really cool feeling. Lots of feedback in the form. People saying that this should be a whole class and that they're smiling <laughs> under their masks. Oh, <laughs> I know we're all learning to smile with our eyes, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. Hey, I'm glad that you all are, you know, sharing your feedback. Um, I'd love to hear, uh, you know, definitely what was your favorite one or um, how did these breathing exercises make your body feel? So really thinking about those body sensations, not necessarily, you know, your brain, but how did your body feel? 
seeing some individuals are saying it felt great to do this. And some people are being very honest and saying this was really hard for me to do. I'm glad that you're being honest. I'm so grateful for that. You know, it's it's not easy because it's not something that we're all taught. You know, it's not something that we, you know, when we're younger, an adult in our life teaches us to do things like brush our teeth, um, you know, to take care of our physical body. Here's how you brush your hair. Here's how you shower and get, you know, everything clean. Here's how you wash your hair. Um, you know, here's how you you know, fold your clothes and get dressed. And we teach you all these things, but we, for your physical body, but we don't necessarily teach how to take care of the inside of our body. Um, you know, things like breathing exercises. So if this is your very first time doing it, awesome. You know, that's so cool. Um, you know, and remember it's all, it's a learning journey. None of us are perfect. Some people are feeling more relaxed and loose, and thank you. We have lots of, lots of responses coming in. I feel there's kind of like a little less tension in my shoulders too, especially with the full body tightened. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel, when I get stressed, I can feel my shoulders get really tense. I think because I hunch and I kind of like squeeze yeah. everything together. And so I think that, you know, to tighten everything and then let it go, I could feel a little bit of, um, you know, that tension remove. So I think that's definitely a positive. And I think I will be doing that a few more times today. Yes. Um, as the day goes on. That's one that I always forget about. You know, I just learned that technique. Um, so it's not something that comes to my brain as fast when something happens, but it's something I need to practice more. Some right, people are super cool. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Jess. No, I was just saying some people are like, it's hard for me to stay tense that long and to remember to breathe while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, Mark, Alejandra, Jeffrey, Yasmin, Nathan, Brock, thank you. Awesome. I'm so glad. Um, you know, being honest with our bodies too. And for some, you know, maybe that didn't work and that's okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is, it's a little bit longer, it's a three minute exercise. Um, this one, uh, you know, when I do it with my students, sometimes some of us are really into it. Sometimes some of us are like, yeah, this is not really for me. Um, and that's okay. Um, I think just remember to make sure you keep the space open for those that are really into it um, and that it does feel good, you know, don't interrupt them. Um, you know, that's something that we learn. So I'm going to show um, you a three minute body scan. It's from a website called calm.com. It is a free website. They have a paid version, but the free version is great. Um, you only really need the free version. Um, it's similar to Headspace. So if you've heard of Headspace, um, Calm is it's kind of the Coke and Pepsi. Um, they do the same function. Um, they just, you know, have slight differences. So I'm going to show you um, calm.com. And I think I might need to be logged in to do this. There we go. So um, we're going to do the three minute body scan. As you can see, there's, you know, up to 30 minutes. I will tell you, I would not attempt a 30 minute body scan for me. Um, it's a little bit too long. It's kind of like, um, you know, running and physical activity where you got to start small. Like you, I couldn't just go run a marathon tomorrow. Um, I'm not in that physical shape, but I could go run maybe, you know, for like 20 minutes, um, you know, like a really quick amount of time, maybe 10 minutes as the starter. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at with this three minute. And honestly, I only ever do three minutes. You know, I'm pretty happy with just a three minute body scan. Um, so let's give it a try.
comments. I'm going to pause because I think you can't hear the audio come through. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to play it through my computer speakers. And that should be. Let's see. All right. Ready for a do over? <laughs> All right. Jess, you can hear me? Yes. Give me a thumbs up. Welcome to this three minute guided body scan. Start by finding a comfortable position with a straight back and close your eyes. Rest your hands gently and allow your shoulders to relax. And take a few deep breaths to ground you in this moment. Feeling your breath as it enters your body and as it leaves your body. Follow the calming breath, the soothing breath, the breath that connects the mind and body. Now bring your attention to your head, feeling into your scalp, forehead, and face. Allow all the muscles in your head and face to soften. And lower your focus to the neck and shoulders, noticing any sensation here. Bringing awareness to your arms, all the way through to the wrists, palms, and fingers. Observing any sensation that arises on the surface of the skin or deeper within. Now scan your back, and if you notice any intensity, direct the breath into that area to allow for a softening. Feel into the belly, observing its rise and fall, rise and fall. And scan your pelvis and hips. Moving your attention all the way into the legs and feet. Letting them relax and become soft. And now settle into the stillness that comes from paying attention to your body part by part. And when you're ready, wiggle your fingers and toes. Come back to the room and open your eyes. Enjoy this relaxed, peaceful state and take it with you into your day. Great job, everyone who gave that a try. I know it's definitely a new um, experience. Back to our R. I've never used the call map before, so you're making me want to look into it more. It's a good one. Um, it's a really amazing uh, tool. You know, it, there's an app that you can download if you have a smartphone um, or a tablet, or you can just access it through, you know, your browser. Um, and again, you know, there's a free version and a paid version, and the free version is really just enough 
Um, and these these types of activities, you know, with calm um, and headspace, you know, those types of meditation apps, sometimes it seems overwhelming. You know, you hear somebody say meditation and you think, oh, you know, sitting silently for 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> and for them, but that's really hard. Um, it's like a muscle. Um, and you got to, you know, try a one minute, then maybe a two minute, then a three minute uh, one and you can work your way up. Or if you find a place like three minute body scan, that's perfect for me, um, you know, then that's kind of where your happy place is and, and go for it. Um, oops, I guess I skipped the question on this one, but that's okay. Um, so feel free to drop any reactions in the form. Um, you know, how did this make you feel? Uh, is this something you would try again? And if it's not, that's also okay. You're like, yeah, this didn't work for me. That's completely okay. We are starting to see some responses from individuals in the oh, form. Some people are saying, I feel very calm now. They like the square breathing best. Some people say that the calm activity, the three minute body scan made them feel a little sleepy. <laughs> and that's normal. That's all yeah. things. So thank you, Roa and Max and Rebecca. Thank you, Eva and Lucas. You know, I, that comment about it makes you sleepy. Um, calm, I, th I think they're on the free version. And if you're not, they're not, you could totally use the um, the body scan or I think their YouTube channel also has some. They have these sleep stories, but you could use that or the body scan. And both, of, both are like meant to relax you into sleep. And so, you know, just what you were saying earlier, you know, you're like, oh, you know, sometimes when I'm really anxious or nervous, I have a hard time sleeping. And this is definitely something we can use to kind of ease ourselves into sleep. Very people are saying they feel relaxed. Colt and Peyton and Diego and Mar, Sandra, thank you. Sophia, Olivia, Mario, thank you. Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. We have a couple more activities to try. Um, this one, I know, you know, when we're in school, we're sitting a lot, um, which is really hard. So um, trying things like chair stretches and chair yoga um, is definitely different types of stretches. Now, I'm not we're not going to go into like a whole like yoga sequence or yoga flow. Um, but, you know, some of these stretches we can do, you can do individually or you can do um, you know, just one at a time uh, if it helps you. So uh, in the next couple slides, I'm going to show you uh, two different pictures of um, the chair yoga um, options. And you can pick one or you can do both if you want. So you can give them a try, whatever is comfortable for you. Now, if you know your body. You know if you have, um, you know, if there's something that you cannot do, don't push yourself. You know, if you have an injury, you know, be careful, um, you know, don't extend yourself. Don't do it just because Mari's telling you to do it. You know you. So if something is uncomfortable, don't do it. Um, you could try the other one or just, you know, sit. You can try just practicing your posture and sit up straight as well. So with Cobra Pose, the one on the left, um, if you want to try that, put your feet flat on the ground. You can kind of scoot your um, bum to the edge of your chair, grab the back of your chair and just look up. You can give it a nice stretch. You can feel that nice stretch in your back. And kind of the opposite. Bring your hands to your knees, kind of hunch over. We call this cat pose. If you want, you can kind of go back and forth between the two. I think that's nice to kind of feel the stretches in your whole body. And if you want to just do one or the other, then that's completely okay too. These are nice ones because you don't even have to get up out of your chair. You can just stay right where you are, you know, right in this space. I know for me, when I was in college, 
and taking tests, I'd get really, you know, really, really stressed out. And sometimes I'd watch the clock and kind of halfway through the test time, I would just take one minute and just kind of give myself a couple little stretches. And I didn't have names for what I was doing, but I was doing this exact same thing. I was doing kind of the chair cobra pose and the chair cat pose uh, in my desk, um, you know, just to kind of get a little stretches, kind of calm my body a little bit. And then I would keep going on my test. And even if it maybe didn't make my grade higher on a harder test, it made me feel better, made me feel more relaxed, you know, and with that, I was able to think better. So maybe I did do better. I don't know. All right, got a couple more to try. So these ones, you know, you'll have to Keep in mind the space um, between you and people around you, or if there's furniture or walls around you. Um, but this one, the side angle, extended side angle pose, you'll just take one hand and stretch it down to your opposite foot and bring your arm up. So you can try it on one side, and then you can try it on the other side. If you wanna try that, or you can try the crescent moon pose. I like this one because it's sciency and it's you know talking about moon phases. But you can give it you know, off kind of as if you're gonna dive into a pool to one side and then to another side. So go ahead, try one or both of those. And I'm going to show you a third set. So there's extended mountain pose. You can just do mountain pose, kind of sitting um, with your hands on your lap uh, that way. Extended mountain pose. I like it because it gets kind of that whole stretchy stretch in. Um, you can give it a nice big stretch. And then forward bend, um, kind of depending on the desk you're sitting in, <laughs> you may have to turn to the side to do this. Um, you know, you might have a desk in front of you. So, um, you know, use your space wisely. If that one doesn't work for you, then just do extended mountain pose or one of the other ones. But forward bend, again, you'll sit at the edge of your chair, um, put your feet out in front of you, and just give it a nice bend over and reach for your toes as far as you can. Remember in all of these, everyone's body's different. So, you know, some people maybe can fold straight in half <laughs> um, and like lie on their legs and, that works for them. And some people, you know, maybe you can reach to your knees and that's as far as you can go. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you either way. Both ways are just ways our bodies work. Awesome. So that was six different chair stretch or yoga poses. Um, if you want to find more, there's tons online. Um, you know, you can, there's tons of websites that have these. Um, you know, if it helps for you, um, you know, find a website, um, you know, bookmark it, or um, some of them have posters. If you have a printer, you could print some out. Um, these are the kind of things that I like to, you know, print out and put in the inside cover of my binder, you know, for any like paper type activities that I have. Uh, I'll just tuck it in there as a reminder to myself, like, hey, if you're feeling stressed, here's something you can do. So, yeah. So thinking about those and then just in general, what are some other ways you can get your body moving? So ways that you like. Uh, there's so much scientific evidence uh, of, around um, physical activity and movement um, and how much it helps both our body and our minds. So, you know, if you're feeling really stressed, then just getting uh, like 20 or 30 minutes of you know, physical activity is really helpful. So maybe that's taking the dog on a walk, maybe that's going for a walk or a bike ride or a skateboard or a scoot uh, adventure. Um, you know, I, some of you I know live in snowy places, and so Jess can list off some snow activities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we I don't get snow, snow where I am, so I don't really know. Well, it's that's one thing. <laughs> it's cold, so I live in the northeast. 
And it's chilly a lot of times. It's just starting to warm up a little. So one of the things that always helps, like when I'm feeling tense and it's winter and it's dark, is I will play with the dog and chase mm-hmm. the dog around the house. We have some people <laughs> saying that they jog in place, they dance. That's a good one. You know, dancing too is is a really great one. Um, Perfect. Because, you know, you can also turn that into a competition. I know, you know, maybe you don't have a Wii because like those are, you know, old old school video game type things, but you can um, you can just find the Just Dance videos on YouTube. Um, and those are really fun because they, you know, tell you how your body to move. But, and then like, if you're doing it with somebody else then you're laughing because you feel kind of goofy about it. But that like laughing and moving is like, a double bonus for making you feel good. So that's always fun. We have some people just like taking a walk or doing yoga, walking with the family, getting fresh air, doing some weights, which I have actually on my computer here. I don't use them enough, but. (laughs) (laughs) They're just waiting for you, right, Jess? Thank you, Kyla, Amar, Avery, Maggie. You know, somebody said getting outside, getting fresh air and thinking like, okay, get outside plus do those breath. Even if it's just like step outside the door and do a couple of those breathing, like square breathing or kind of like one of the, um, like the GIFs um, or like the full body tents, you know, just step outside, do that and then come back in and see what happens. See if that works for you. Love it. Singing, dancing. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Brock, Lily, Corey, Arslan. Ms. You know what's cool about singing, uh, Jess? Tell me. Even if like you're you only sing in the shower or the car because you don't want other people to hear you, it forces you to take deep breaths. Oh. You know, you have to take those deep breaths and then let it out slow because you're singing. And so if you're like, oh, the breathing exercises don't work, but I like singing. There you go. Singing is a built-in breathing exercise. Excellent. Excellent. Playing sports, walking the dog, singing, jogging. Excellent. I Someone's getting a dog in 57 days. <gasps> <Whoop. laughs> I see there's a countdown going on. That's so exciting. So exciting. Oh. Well, oops, that's where that question went, but that's okay. Um, I think we're good. We have one more activity um, and we're going to be doing some journaling. Now, journaling is not always something that's comfortable to everyone. You know, if this is the first time you've been asked to kind of write about yourself um, and just kind of open write, then you can be like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to say. Like, this is really uncomfortable, but just start typing that. Just start saying, I don't know what I'm going to say. This is really uncomfortable. I don't like this feeling of having to write. And then you kind of keep going, keep with that train of thought. Um, I'm not giving you a prompt on this. I just want you to spend five minutes writing about whatever is on your mind. Um, So you're going to open a new Word document. So if you're using uh, Word on the web, you'll just make a new tab and go to office.com. And from office.com, you know, if you need to sign in, that's fine. If not, then on the left hand side, oops, there we go. Um, you'll see Word. So you can click on Word and we'll go new blank document. So again, going to office.com. If you're on the web version, if you're on, you know, just the uh, program on your computer, then just, you know, open a new Word document. First thing we're going to do is today's date. So it is. Thursday, March 25th, and then just under it, just start, just start writing, just start writing whatever is on your mind. So we'll give you about um, five minutes to do that, and then um, after five minutes, we will uh, wrap up all together.
Mari, do you journal frequently? I don't as much as I know I should. There's times when I, yeah, when I know I should and it, and every time I do, it really helps. So it's one of those where what I know I should do and what I actually do don't always match up. But remember, we're all a work in progress. And, you know, even though I know all these things, I am not perfect and I get stressed mm -hmm. out and I get overwhelmed and, I used to, yeah. uh, my parents recently moved and handed me boxes of some of my old things and I found all my old journals from middle school and high school and just reading how, like I would be talking about, oh, my, I have a basketball game coming up or a big math test and how I would write out what I was going through, but it was kind of like I would write it out before bed in tuck myself in and I know now I have the distraction of a cell phone which I didn't have back when I was in middle school but just rereading the things that I wrote to kind of process I believe journaling is very cool because then you go back and read it and you're like wow that was my life yeah I I think I always felt really anxious doing journals on paper because mm -hmm. You know, there's always like, oh, what if somebody finds it? Like just being too embarrassed because I like, so I'd like journal, but then I like take the pages out and shred them, which like is a process actually of like, you write it all out and then, you know, if you don't want to go back to it, it's kind of too bad because I wish I could <laughs> see what my past self said. But um, more often now, I'll just open up a new document and type out what I'm thinking. Um, and it's, I think, the process of kind of letting everything come out and kind of let it work itself out through text is really, really helpful. I um, very much agree. Yeah, some people, uh, other things that I've done too is I've open, opened up like the voice memos app on my phone and just like talked it out. So if I'm like not able to type it out for that moment, um, some of you could try voice typing in Word also, where you could just like speak everything and then you have go voice to text. Um, and that's also a really good strategy for, um, you know, getting out, uh, kind of like getting, it's almost like you can get things out of your brain and put it to the side. And it's like, that stuff is so valid and it's on paper. So like, I'm not going to lose that, but I can kind of move on with what I want to do. So I think that's really, really important. I agree. All right, so we've hit our five minute mark. So hopefully you got a moment to uh, write out some of the things that you are thinking. Um, oops. Where did my, my questions got out of order? So let me just rearrange them as we're here. Oops, I lost it. Okay. All right, so we are going to, oh, that's okay, we'll leave it. Um, we are going to quickly, how is journaling helpful for our mindfulness? So what did you find helpful um, about that process? What are you doing? Go into your slide. There we go. <clears throat> so again, please go ahead and share in our form. Um, how was journaling helpful for our mindfulness? I will keep an eye on the form and see everything that's coming in. Give you about 30 more seconds if there's something you want to share with us about the journaling activity and then we'll do just one more wrap-up question because we're just a couple minutes from the bottom of the hour. We do have some people writing in. Thank you to everybody. Some people are saying it just it makes you feel happy to kind of share a thought on paper or digitally. It's a great way to relax and get stuff off your mind. Thank you, Amar, Peyton, Tristan, Sophia, Roja, 
Mario, we appreciate you chiming in. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. I love it. Yeah, definitely yeah. like that. Get get it off your mind. It like almost physically gets it off your mind and into a different place. Um, to I'm thinking those... this helps me vent. Journaling oh. helps me vent. Yeah. There we go. All right. So one final question for us. Um, as we kind of head out um, and enjoy the rest of our day, why is it important to practice our mindfulness skills? So now we're going to go through this real quick. So um, this could be you know share with us. Um, we might not get to share it out, but that's okay. Um, you know, just think that these these are skills that need practice. Just like if you play basketball, you have to keep practicing you know, taking shots from different places. Um, with mindfulness, you have to practice different techniques to help your brain um, and different things work in different situations. So keep practicing um, because as you keep practicing, you'll get better at it. It'll be more comfortable. And then, you know, slowly it might become your default reaction when something stresses you out. Um, so definitely something good to think about. I'm very much loving the responses we're getting from everyone. Just knowing that it's important to practice your mindfulness skills so that you can confront your thoughts and explore your curiosities and face your feelings head on. These are fantastic. Thank you so much. Healthier lifestyle. We know what to do when we get stressed. We can handle it better. Thank you. I love that. Help us with our mental health and ask for help when we need it. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Remember, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to tell somebody, hey, I need help. You know, emotions are hard. Um, you know, you think, oh, you grow up and then emotion, it's easier. And it's not always easier. Um, but finding those friends, those adults in your life that you know, can either help you breathe or help you talk through things or um, any of that, you know, is really, really helpful. So, you know, as we close out, I just want to thank you teachers for giving the time for us to learn together, um, you know, for taking an hour to learn and explore with us. Thank you to all our students for participating, for trying out these new things that maybe felt uncomfortable at first. Um, thank you for trying it and giving great effort, great participation. Uh, but it has been such a joy to share with you all, to learn with you all, uh, and we hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much. Call to action. Don't forget to practice your mindfulness and reflection. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, everyone.